Are you having trouble printing Star Trek starships and want to figure out how to do it? Well, today I will show you today how I printed the Akira class with my CR-10 V2 in a large scale. See you guys inside. Hello and welcome to today's video. As I said, we are going for the Akira class starship in a large scale. This is one single print. Um, the file is out on Thingiverse, so I'll show you where to go find that, and I'll show you how I slice these guys to get them in one print. Now, some people may say, oh, you're using too much support, or something like that, but these ships are hard to print and get good detail without a ton of supports messing it up. And sometimes you got to go for the long game on how to print these ships. So this was actually featured as one of six ships I did in a video, link up above and down in the description of the basically the battle of sector zero zero from star trek first contact that's where we first saw the akira class uh, i believe it was the uss thunderchild but this ship caught my attention because it's basically an expansion on the defiant as a new breed of warships for the federation to defend the federation and a new advanced battle line and the akira class she kept popping up you see her in multiple episodes of d space nine even at more explicitly in the Battle of Shintaka, where you see this guy just get pulverized. But you also see this one pop up a couple times in Star Trek Voyager, which she's on the other side of the Delta Quadrant. How's this guy going to pop up? Well, when she got home, you saw the Akira class. And also, there was the episode where we saw the Prometheus. The Akira class was one of the few ships sent to get her back. So, a little bit of tidbit trivia on the Akira class. So, an advanced finding ship. <coughs> But, how do I print it? Well, in all honesty, most of my Star Trek ships, I print them standing straight up like this. Because, if you do it like this, you're going to get a ton of support structure on the bottom, and it's just going to mess up the bottom of the model. When I'm standing up like this, I've got very few points of contact, less stuff I've got to deburr from support, and it builds up, and the entire front of the ship, the top, and the base is usually in pristine condition. So like, for example, this one, I've got some cleaning up to do around the photon torpedo pods, the back of the nacelles you can see a little bit, and the back of the impulse engines, and back here where the shuttle bay is, there is some jaggeding from supports. But really, in all honesty, it's gonna take me 15 minutes to clean up and my model's ready to go. Now the Akira class model that you'll see, it does have some flaws. I'll show you those in Kira and we'll move forward. So if you guys enjoy the content you see on this channel, wanna see more of this kind of stuff, or just more how-to printer information videos. If you got questions, hit that subscribe button, join the crew, keep seeing what we're coming up with. New printers are getting added all the time. I'm coming up with new models to print. Taking a lot of suggestions from the fan community, this was actually one. Um, you can see models behind me that I've either done. There's some sitting off to the side here that we still gotta talk about, but I haven't gotten there. <laughs> Cause there's just a lot of models. Um, and a lot of cool things that you can do with a 3D printer. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, share it with your friends that do 3D printing or have an interest, and kind of just see some of the fun stuff that you can do. Because, I mean, I we do Star Trek, Star Wars, uh, Mass Effect has been in here, uh, Warhammer has been in here, and there's still more to come. And of course, you know, can't forget Battlestar Galactica and Babylon 5 up by my head here. I mean, come on. Even Marvel has gotten in here. So, and DC Comics, because there's Wonder Woman. But, and, uh, you know, Mercy, you know, from, uh, I completely blank on what the game is. If you know what the game is, let it, leave a comment down below. But, all in all, let's get over to Kira, and let's get this guy sliced so you can see it print, and get a closer look at this final product. All right, guys, here's where I got the model. This is the Akira class fixed for print, for print from Printformers. So there are a couple others out here on Thingiverse, and I'm going to tell you, if you take them on, and you try to go large, you're gonna have, just have a bad time. There's a lot of errors, and even this one has some errors, as you can see from the final print, that you'll have to fix too. But this model is the best one of them all. So thank you, Printformers, for your remake and getting this one going. So this one has worked really, really well for me. There's a lot of comments on the model too. So just kind of one of those things, if you do use it, you know, make sure you give credit to this guy. This model's been out here for over three years and it's it's a good model there's a lot of downloads it's really work really good so with all due respect we hop over to Kira As you can see I've loaded it in and let's get some stuff let's get it centered 
Now, like I said, I want to do this with as little support as I can, but I also want to do it with as much stability as I can. So what I have learned and just experienced, because you guys have seen me print a lot of these, is tilting it up. Now I'm going to knock this guy down to 75%, and that'll get it up on the build plate. It's still too big for my CR-10. Now this is a CR-10 build plate, so keep that in mind. So in actuality, I think I did mine at around 65%. Eh, stop telling me what I need. And that's looking to be just about the limit of what you can do. So we've got it on there. We've got it at 65%. You guys noticed I did that. That's purely for the camera. You don't have to do that. You're not going to gain anything by doing it. So that's just me. So, but I have found this gives the minimum points of contact to most of the Star Trek Federation ship models and lets me build them up quite easily. Now, the key here is placing your supports. Do I have excess support? Yes. But I don't have, if I lay this flat, one, it has to be smaller. Two, I have a ton of contact points. Now, when I say contact points, that's where the support connects to the model. Me personally, I want as few of those as I can. But as you can see, we've got like this piece here, this has to have support to even get to build the torpedo bays and stuff like this. And one thing that bothers me is the little bit that this is touching the build plate. That's gonna be problematic. So I'm gonna grab the model and I'm gonna come down here and grab my custom supports. And just where I see these few spots that I think are gonna be problematic, I'm gonna put a custom support. Because what's cool about these custom supports is they may not, they actually will work with the auto generate and possibly, and we'll take that off for a minute, um, not generate as much support um, in the auto generate. But it's kind of one of those things where a lot of these corners are, I want to support like right here, I want support, I want that to build up, and I want it to build nicely. So one of the cool things about auto, these custom support, yeah, I'm doing a lot of work and it's adding more objects, which isn't terrible. It's not great, but it's not terrible. But basically, you can see I'm adding in just enough supports. And as you can see, some of these just need to be deleted because they're not actually doing anything. The computer just thought I needed it. Or it thought it wasn't too congested, basically for support for that support there so we'll get those out of the way and then I'm gonna pop up here basically I'm looking for red spots to put in some supports I don't want them connecting in too many spots so that's where I'm gonna start I'm gonna put one back on the back of the bridge as well so those come off real easy I'm actually gonna come in right here where the impulse array is and see if one fits really well. Give the impulse arrays a little bit, engines a little bit of extra love and TLC. I'm gonna bring my menu back. Here are my settings. We're gonna go scroll through them real quick. Now, one thing I did notice is top surface skin layers. Okay, so we are doing that top layers five. My infill, this is a model for me. Now, if you're making this as a toy, fill it in a bit more. I'm gonna do 20% just to, for strength. But if you're doing a toy, you may wanna up that a little bit just so it's not as easy for the kids to break. Or if it's a toy for you, hey, you know, no, not judging here, I, I, I'll admit, I play with them because it's just kind of fun. Um, print temperature is a little higher than I would like. I run inland PLA, I run it at about 215. Initial layer, honestly, I do about 215. Um, I was working with TPU, that's why those were changed. Uh, print speed, 50. Infill speed, about 84 is fine, because I'm not too worried about that. Travel speed, Z-Hop, 5. Make sure Z-Hop is enabled. Uh, let's see here. Did I skip retraction? No, we haven't gotten a retraction yet. We want retraction. Uh, enable retraction. Mine works well at 6.5. Um, and here are my other settings. Z-Hop. 
do not Z. I uncheck Z hop only over printed parts because I want it to Z hop over everything. I don't want it to catch. Generate support. Okay. I'm going to generate 80%. With what I've added, plus what it's going to auto generate to support those, that's fine. And I don't really ever adjust any of these. Now, the raft, here's where I'm getting key. I want as much, with going so tall and so thin, I want to make sure I have good build plate areas. So I'm actually going to cut that up to 10. And it's going to connect all of this into one piece. So that way, I've got a good flat layer grabbing that plate. So if, say, my print head for some reason drags, say my bed is not perfectly level or something, it drags, it doesn't knock the model off and I lose the whole thing. Because that just sucks when that happens. And believe me, with a model like this where you've got the warpness, you can't see my hands, but where you've got the warpness cells off like this and it's having to jump over, jump over, jump over four times to print all of this, there is a very good possibility of it knocking it something causing a knockoff, which is one of the more difficult things with printing the Star Trek ships is the warp nacelles make this a terror. Um, but this is totally worth printing. So I've printed multiple of these. It is a lot of fun. And it's slicing it up here. It should be done here in a moment. For as robust of PC I have, I would think this would go faster, but this is a Cura thing more than anything. All right, let's look at the preview. And you'll see what I'm talking about with the raft. So you don't have to do a RAF. If you're confident, go for it. But you can see where the computer thought I needed more support, which is fine. The RAF has everything connected on one, so it's less hopping on initial layers. And it's got some more support going up to the impulse engines and a few spots. So not all that bad. Um, for as big as this is, and as much infill as I'm doing, I may have overdone the infill. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, I kind of overdid the infill a little bit. So you can probably knock your infill for a toy, this is probably good for a toy. But if you're just doing this for a model, 5% probably would be fine. So, but as big as this is, a half a spool ain't bad. But it's kind of one of those things. It's definitely something to keep in mind as you go through printing this. So let's hop over to the time lapse. Let's get this guy printed. I hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you on the other side. All right, guys, that's the print. You saw me take it into Cura. I scrolled through my settings so you could see what I'm doing. You saw me adding supports where I felt this, uh, the auto generate was a little bit weak to make sure the ship built up correctly. And it's just kind of one of those things, you gotta build the, you gotta look at what you're doing with supporting, because supporting is the key. You don't want too much support scarring up the model, but at the same time, you don't want to waste PLA that you don't have to. 
Now me, sometimes I'm willing to waste a little bit of PLA and support to get the good final product. But that's me, that's not everybody. A lot of people want to do this as cheaply as possible. Frankly, I want the quality of model. So if I have to do a little bit more in support, I do. So it's kind of one of those things. It's a bit of a trade-off on what you got to do. Now, again, the Akira class. Beautiful ship. I wish we saw more of it. Um, in actuality, they had talked about this being the model in Enterprise. They were just going to reskin the Akira class and use it, which is kind of funny because this was an advanced warship, not one of the midline series. So that would have been a little awkward in Enterprise. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that subscribe button and join me next time as we get ready to do more cool 3D printing stuff. See you guys later.